Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun spring themed cozy mysteries. These are some mysteries that I'm personally interested in that I'm just really excited to be reading this spring and they all have kind of a spring themed element to them. So let's go ahead and jump into our very first mystery. So our first book is called Death Becomes Her. This is by Nancy Coco and this is a newer series. This is the Oregon Honeycomb series. Actually one of you, Cat Reads, actually recommended or like was speaking about this series to me. So yeah, I'm actually super excited. She said she was reading the second book, really enjoyed the first one. And this sounds like such a fun premise and the idea of like bees and honeycomb and all that is very springy to me personally. So this is actually the first book in the series. There are now, uh, the second one is about to come out. So the series just came out last year and this one I'm talking about today is the first one in the series. So if you like starting from the beginning, this is going to be a great one for you. So our main character in this is named Ren Johnson and she owns the Let It Be boutique which adorable name great name love it i think the cover super cute and one day she is walking her cat havana brown cat which if you haven't seen look at how cute these cats are they're, they're so beautiful um her cat everett on the beach and they come across this lady named agnes and she is dead very clearly like dead cold she's gone um and she is actually apparently this like very cranky lady who is the owner of a nearby like antique shop and unfortunately, she has something in her hand that actually links Ren possibly to the crime, so the sheriff is kind of on her case about it, and her and Everett have to figure out what happened here and clear Ren's name, essentially. So, really fun way to start a cozy mystery series off. I think the premise is really fun. I love the idea that a lot of her items in her shop are made with like honeycomb and beeswax and like different natural things like that. So it sounds really fun and thank you again Kat for recommending or talking about the series to me because it sounds like a blast. Our next book is called Dragon Will Dead. It's by Laura Childs and this is the Tea Shop Mystery book 8. I am I believe this is a fairly popular series. I haven't personally read anything from this, so let me know if you have, but I do love tea, so I think it could be a really fun one. Okay, so this book sounds really fun. So the main character's name is, I'm going to try to say this correctly, Theodosa, and she owns a tea shop, and so every year in Charleston, South Carolina, there is a huge, like, flora uh, garden festival where the upper crust, I'm hearing that term more and more, it's kind of, maybe it's more common than I thought, but the upper crust opens their gardens and things out for the public to tour them. So there's this big festival with flowers and you know all the springtime fun and so she's looking forward to serving tea at the festival and exploring the flowers and stuff herself because she doesn't seem to know a lot about them but you know it's a beautiful springy day and it sounds like one of her friend's husbands has a heart attack however the widow suspects it's not actually a heart attack so now Theodosa is on the case trying to figure out what's happening here trying to stay on top of serving tea at the festival enjoying the springtime but figuring out is there really a nefarious element to her friend's uh, husband's death basically. So this one sounds really interesting. I actually have not read anything from Laura Childs, which I really need to get on because I know she's a pretty big time cozy mystery author. So I'm thinking maybe I'll start with this series. Let me know if you've read anything from her and what you would recommend. <gasps> the next one I'm so excited for. So I actually have it in my hands. My library did not have the next, it only had the first book in this series. So I actually, I requested the second one, but they turned down the request. So I went and got the first uh, so the second and the third book in the series used online because I was like, I need to keep reading this series. It's really good. So I'm very excited to be sharing this with you. This is from the Bread Shop Mystery Series by Winnie Archer, and this particular one is called The Walking Bread, A Deadly Rising. I thought that was really funny. Very pun like very corny, but very funny. Um, again, this is by Winnie Archer. So I've read the first book so far, and it was a five-star read for me. It was excellent. And essentially, the main character's name is Ivy, and she uh, helps out and does like work and stuff at a bread shop locally. She returned home after her mother's passing, and the first book did a really good job. Um, of really exploring her character. I was really impressed because sometimes the first book in a cozy can be very like the tropes can be very predictable. Um, a lot of them you know start out with the character returning to their hometown and like after you know a breakup or someone dying or something like that and it it can be very monotonous sometimes monotonous sometimes but this the first book was excellent. I definitely recommend it. It was called Needed to Death. Um, I'll put a picture right here if you want to check it out. 
I'll link it down below too because it's excellent. I highly recommend. But anyways, this is the third book in the series and it is very like springy to me because essentially there is a, it's in Santa Sofia that this event is and she works in a bread shop but she also is a freelance photographer on the side which I think is a really fun element to the cozy sleuthing that she does. And she is helping out with the bread and pastry at the Santa Sofia annual spring event where she is the official photographer and there's a lot of elaborate cars and like artists and things going on at the time and it sounds like her brother Billy because um, her brother and father also live in this area he competes in the car competition every year and him and the other guy who's like usually the runner-up or like one of the top picks for winner kind of get into it um, before the race and unfortunately the other guy is found dead so her brother is kind of suspected of the crime because they were exchanging some crosswords earlier and everyone knows they kind of have a rivalry with this so Ivy is on the case to clear Billy her brother's name and I'm so excited for this I'm waiting I haven't started it yet because I'm waiting for the second book crust no one <laughs> I love the puns I love them I'm not apologizing um, so I'm waiting for that one to come in the mail, but I'm, I'm very excited. So I highly recommend this series and I'm very excited to be reading this because it is very thematic. And look at those pastries. So good. I'm so excited. All right, next book. Okay, this next one is from a series I've never heard about, never heard of this author, and it sounded really interesting to me. It's called Suspicions in Spring Firewatch. It's a f the first in the series. It's the Firewatch Cozy Mystery Series, and it's by Lee Branson. I have to say, I'm not the hugest fan of the cover. I think it's really beautiful and, like, you know, very a gorgeous natural scene, but it doesn't really stream mystery to me uh, like some of these other covers do. However, you know, the, the, the summary sounds so interesting. Listen to this. So our main character's name is Jessica Noble and she is a, she lives in Northern California and she has a job as a fire spotter because California um, has a lot of forest fires out there unfortunately and so she is a fire spotter she can detect sm you know smoke she spots fire she's really good at her job and until one day she discovers a body that was in a fire like someone was trying to hide the fact that the, this body was there. So she is kind of on the case trying to figure this out because she's very concerned that there's maybe a cover-up going on and then she's having to deal with these like FBI agents who are getting in her face and it just sounds really interesting. I'm personally very fascinated by like arson. <laughs> that sounds wrong. Please don't take that the wrong way. But like I'm very interested in cases that involve fire. I find it just to be very like an interesting swing because most cozy mysteries you know we find somebody like they've been poisoned or shot or something so whenever a co like a mystery involves like fire I'm always really intrigued I find that to just be very interesting so I'm very intrigued to see what she can dig up about this and who the person is and what the situation is so this is actually the first book in the series there is a second one um, on that's coming out but yeah I'm really interested in this let me know if you've heard this series I I personally like an element, like a fire trope, if you will. I do apologize if I'm a little congested. I'm just a spring allergies, which is perfect for this spring-themed video. So our next book is by a very popular cozy author. Author, Her name is Lynn Cahoon, and this is a novella, so if you're looking for a shorter read, this is a great one. So this is The Pumpkin Spice Killing. It's a farm-to-fork mystery. There was actually just a new book for this released uh, in January, so the series is very much ongoing. Now, I was kind of intrigued because this is very clearly set in spring, but the title is A, a Pumpkin Spice Killing. I'm not sure why it's called a pumpkin spice killing. I'm imagining when you read the book you'll find out because to me that's more like a fall winter thing. However, the main premise of this is that Angie and her staff at the Farm to Fork restaurant are going on an R&R &R trip together to kind of just relax, take a break from all the craziness going on. However, their trip turns to out to be not so relaxing, unfortunately. So they were thinking they were going to like this art and craft R&R &R vacation. However, they actually end up at this um, retired military veterans home and they are somehow like they get involved with like painting and weeding and doing all the spring cleaning essentially of the home. I'm not entirely sure why the summer doesn't go too much into that but they end up doing this for this veteran and what I'm really intrigued by this is that when they get to know the veteran more they find out that you know he's he's older he knows unfortunately his time maybe is coming closer and 
he wants to make amends with his son. However, he can't find his son. Like, he keeps looking for his son, he doesn't know where his son is, so Angie and her team, who have been involved in other mysteries, are like, hey, we'll get, we'll figure out where your son is. So they're on the case trying to figure out where the son is, however, the more information they're able to gather about the sun, the more they suspect someone's trying to block their efforts to find the sun. So I'm really intrigued by this mystery. It sounds very interesting. I really like mysteries where they're trying to track someone down like this. So let me know if you like this series. I've heard some good things about it. I definitely want to give it a try. And this sounds like a really fun novella. Our next book is called Antiques Bazaar. It's part of the Trash and Treasures mystery series by Barbara Allen. And this is book four of 15. So if you like this book, you'll have plenty of reading material. So they're living in the town of Serene and the Mississippi River has flooded during the springtime. It's a mess. A lot of businesses are flooded. However, they, uh, Brandy and her mother are trying to still operate their business and they actually end up, her mother ends up talking someone into de uh, departing from their very valuable Fabergé egg and they end up putting it on for auction and the person who wins the egg ends up mortally uh, scrambled as the summary says so they end up dead and Mo Brandy and her mother are now on the case to figure out what you know, what went wrong? Did someone steal this because of the value of the egg? Is there another story behind it? What's the mystery, basically? So I thought this sounded super interesting. I think the cover is adorable with the dog on it. And yeah, I thought this sounded like a really cool, like, spring one. I like the element of flooding, since a lot of places do deal with flooding, unfortunately, during the springtime. Okay. So forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, but I'm really into the Bake Shop Mystery series by Ellie Alexander. I'm on the fourth book in the series right now. I'm speeding through it. I love this series. I just did my library haul where I talked about them, so you can check that out above right now if you want. But I included two books from the series on the spring-themed one because they're both heavily spring-themed and if you have a sweet tooth, if you like a baking food themed mystery, these will be up your alley. The writing in these is spectacular. So so the first one is called Nothing Bunt Trouble by Ellie Alexander. This is book 11 out of 15 in the series. So again, if you like the series, you'll have plenty to read. I highly recommend it. Our main character's name is Jules or Juliet. It's a set in Ashland, Oregon, and there's a lot of Shakespeare elements in the town. It's very tourist driven. They do lots of Shakespeare festivals, which I love. I think it's a really fun addition to the cozy mystery series and like the cozy town setting. Um, and Jules and her mother run a bake shop called Tort, which is the family business. In this particular book, Jules finds a hidden dossier in her father's belongings. Her father long passed away um, before she returned home to help her mother with Tort. And she finds this dossier with a like hit and run car crash like that had happened long ago. And so she's kind of curious about why her father would have kept this. So she's on this mystery, it's more of like a personal family mystery, which I think will be really interesting to see why her father might have had these. Was it really a hit and run? What was going on? Was it, I, I have no idea personally, like was this someone he knew? Because I'm assuming she probably brings it up to her mother, but maybe her mother doesn't know. And so that is the Nothing But Trouble mystery. The next one is called Chilled to the Cone, and this is actually book 12. And this is more like spring summary um, setting. Jules is getting ready to sell Tort's new line of like ice cream and like frozen custards and different cold goodies essentially. And there's this very colorful street performer in town who is known for dressing very uh, vivaciously wearing like capes and different costumes and unfortunately he is found dead near Tort's shop. So Jules is on the case again trying to figure out what happened. This poor lady, a lot of the cozy mystery protagonists that keep finding dead bodies. Imagine that. But this is the mystery here. I just, I love Chilled to the Cone. I think that is an amazing one. So those are the two bake shop ones. We'll move on to another author now. So our next one is a knitting mystery. This is The Close Knit Killer. This is by Maggie Sefton and this is book 11 out of 15 in the series. So Kelly is a avid knitter and one of her good friends owns a knitting shop in town and they, they and her group of knitters meet frequently and unfortunately this ex or like veteran con man, Jared is released from jail after a long time and he had wronged someone in Kelly's knitting group, Barbara, and many other people in the Colorado area of, I think it's Fort Connor that they live in, by like setting up some sort of like Ponzi scheme. And unfortunately he is out of jail now and he is back to his old tricks. However, he is shortly found out to be dead. So 
now Kelly's trying to figure out, did someone take revenge on him from his previous crimes? Like, what went wrong here? And unfortunately, uh, Kelly's good friend Barbara is also suspected of the crime because she did have a bone to pick with Jared because she was, you know, financially ruined by his actions and the Ponzi scheme he set up. So she has a bone to pick with him. The cops are looking at her friend and so Kelly is on the case to clear her friend's name and figure out what actually happened here. All right, and our last one is called Crepe Expectations, A Pancake House Mystery. This is book five in the series and it's by Sarah Fox. I love crepe expectations. I love that title and I think the cover is super darling. And this is a very springy, even like summery book because again they are, they're on a cove so they have, you know, the ocean, there's some flooding and stuff going on in the area and our main character Marley is the owner of the flip house pancake house in town and herself and some other chefs in town are going to be judging a competition upcoming. Uh, however, one day Marley goes to visit her boyfriend Brett who is a landscaper and they're visiting on some sort of estate when they find human remains that were uncovered due to the flooding at the time. So again another like flooding themed, there's a lot of like natural disaster themed ones it seems like in spring so I kind of, I think that's an interesting trope. So they find these human remains and are now on the case trying to figure out whose remains these are. So it turns out that the remains are actually an 18 year old woman's from 10 years ago. So they found her remains, they're trying to figure out who did it, and on top of that, during the cooking competition, one of her contestants are falling mysteriously ill. There's a lot of different elements here going on, so she's wondering, are these connected? Are they not connected? What is going on here, basically? So I love this. I love cozy mysteries that incorporate, like, older mysteries, like, where they, you know, find a big clue that relates to an older case that gets solved in the mystery, so I'm hoping that's the case with this one. Again, I haven't read anything from this author or case, let me know if you have, and that's going to wrap up our 10 spring-themed cozy mysteries. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it makes my day. I do upload mystery and book content every single week, and uh, my name's Amy Marie, I don't think... Don't think I mentioned that, but it's Amy Marie, lots of mystery and book content on this channel. I hope you'll stick around. Let me know in the comments down below which of these books sounded good to you. Are you a fan of any of these series? Would you recommend them? And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!